causes it. Um, some say that it's just natural. That's the way some horses are. Uh, there will typically be a, a, a up on the dorsal aspect of, of, of P3, um, hardened keratin filling in the crack, and and uh, even to the point of being a, a, a tumor. Uh, some say that this hard material is just filling in the void, and some say that it forms first and causes the, the, the grooves. Um, I think it can happen each of those ways, and then additionally see it so commonly on horses, on laminitic horses, that have had the separated lamina, and the, the hoof walls have, have been um, out of a support role long term, there's been excess sole pressure long term. Um, and remember I said this is common throughout life in draft horses, that the hoof walls will, will literally peel away from the bone at a very young age um, and dumps that sole on the ground. Uh, that's a common thread between um, the typical, or I should say common draft horse foot and the laminitic foot is excess sole pressure. Um, and, and uh, a possible uh, reduction in circulation and that contributing to bone loss and, and thus these cramps. Uh, that's, that's my favorite theory right there. That's the way I feel, the, 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 the reason you see it on so many la uh, long-term laminated courses is excess sole pressure and the reason you see it on so many draft horses is excess sole pressure. So, so the, that's, that's my thoughts on the matter. Um, so how do you combat that? How do you prevent that? Just what I'm trying to show you here. Keep well-connected hoof walls on your draft horse, on all your horses, and so that the hoof wall can help in, in its load-bearing role. Um, but so when you have these, the lamina will fold over on themselves. They often will be actually missing lamina. There almost always is a gap that, 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 uh, that forms. And this, this is a, a favorite entry point for, for fungal infection. And will almost always, if left unchecked, lead to center toe cracks. In fact, basically every time you see a, a horse with, with bilateral center toe cracks or center toe cracks on all four feet, um, you can just about count on this condition. When I see these exaggerated carinas and specifically the, um, a hole in the lamina uh, and with, with the white powdery residue of fungal infection up in there and or resulting center toe cracks, I basically always put people on an antifungal soaking program. Um, the products clean tracks and white lightning work very well. Um, I also commonly use uh, uh, a 50-50 mixture of apple cider vinegar and water. Um, I also uh, like a uh, two tablespoons per gallon mixture of Lysol and water um, for, for this, um, all in, in, um, um, in for, the, for the last two home remedies, 30 minute soaks three times a week. Um, then if you're improving going to once a week, um, with the clean tracks and white lightning following the directions of the manufacturer. Um, but you'll, you'll, you'll rarely grow in a solid hoof wall and, and fill in these cracks once they're there um, without some sort of antifungal um, soaking going on. It's very important. All right, another factor I want to talk about that's going on with this horse is the lamellar wedge. Um, a slight one in this case, but it's present and you need to be able to, to see it. Um, and uh, there's several different different external clues that, that we can use for that. Um, one is the frog position. Uh, the frog growth originates just behind the tip of P3 and so uh, uh, is in a very consistent place relative to P3 unless there is a, a, a lot of remodeling to, to, to P3. And so if you have a well-connected wall, the frog will appear more forward in the hoof capsule. We have a lot of, of capsule distortion, you'll, uh, uh, the, the frog will appear to be further back in the hoof capsule. So 
basically, and, and, and we, we went very deep into this and under the horse, but I need to hit it again right here, is, is uh, uh, if you divide the frog into thirds, and this is approximate, but if you divide the frogs into thirds, usually one third the length of the frog, out in front of the frog would be how much soul you should have most of the time in front of the frog. So when you look, say, in this case that I've drawn here, um, an exaggeration from the draft horse we're trimming, but it helps to illustrate it, is we basically have the length of the frog out in front of the frog. So we know we're going to have this, uh, this capsule rotation. Um, now, just like in any other horse, we have our... Uh, our epidermal lamina. They're attached to a part of the hoof wall. And we have our, our dermal lamina, maybe connected right here at the top, but then they deviate from each other. What varies a lot is what's in between. It depends on, on, on how the separation occurred, how fast it occurred, um, but this may be a gap, a hole, or it may have stretched lamina, stretched epidermal lamina in there. It may be full of gunk and rotten material. Um, uh, or it may be filled in solid with lamellar wedge so that it appears, and this is the one that will trip people the, the most commonly, and this can occur at the quarters as well, that, that, out, that it appears to be a tight white line. And it can be very hard to, to distinguish the lamellar wedge from the sole. And the difference being, again, the lamellar wedge, the, the material was expressed between the epidermal and dermal lamina, and, and the sole being expressed from the solar aspect of the coffin bone. So in this case, in this draft horse that we're working on in this video, we're somewhere in between where there is a, a little bit of lamellar wedge formed here something like that, and then there's the gap and the stretched epidermal lamina there, but this area in between is lamellar wedge. It makes it appear that the sole is more forward than it truly is. So, but, but, but using our frog ratio, also looking at the upper growth and where it would hit the ground, we can, we, and then, and then actually a color differential, almost always present, that, that, the lamellar wedge will usually be white and lacking of pigment, pigment usually. And the sole will usually um, have some pigment in it. Um, and, and you'll usually be able to see the difference between the, the two right there. And that, of course, if you can see it, is a, is a tremendous help as well. So if you look on, at the foot on this draft horse and look at the red line I've drawn here, uh, uh, not only is that line really proportional to what a healthy hoof should look like, we also have our, our ratio of, of, of one third the length of the frog uh, out in front of the frog of sole material. But also look at the color differential. Uh, again, you, you can't count on this. Um, it can be deceiving, but, but the lamellar wedge, what's out in front of that red line, is, is snow white. And, then the, the, the sole material has gray pigmentation in it. So hopefully the, when we grow out all um, of the hoof capsule rotation and there is no lamellar wedge and a tight white line, that the, that, that red line is approximately where our sole will be. And in fact, if you fast forward to the future and look at our, uh, uh, where we end up with with this same foot, you'll see that, that, that that's precisely what we've done. That sole is back there where it's supposed to be, um, all supported by the coffin bone. And then a nice tight white line and then straight to the hoof wall there. All right, moving along, another factor we're gonna hopefully eliminate for this horse, um, very common, the hoof wall just peeling apart in shelly layers, um, deep splits uh, that go all the way through. Um, um, three, four different shelly layers um, of, of hoof peeling apart in different directions. And, and you'll see in our initial trimming, all we're doing is, is, is relieving lever forces on that ground level. But the real job is to stop the mechanical separation and, and uh, uh, allow us to grow in a hoof that isn't, that, 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 that 
that's, that's intact all the way through. And again, fast forwarding, um, we eventually will achieve that and have a solid hoof wall at ground level. And looking at the bottom of the foot on the source, you'll see the, 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 the very deep uh, collateral grooves in the back part of the foot. Way too much heel on this horse right now. Um, the, the heels actually start to roll and fold underneath the horse. Um, the frog's been lifted out of function for too long and, and it's uh, just uh, thin and cruddy um, uh, uh, and infected with disease and peeling, up, uh, peeling off in little shallow layers. Then if you look at the apex of the frog, the true apex I've circled here, um, ignoring all of the, 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 the excess uh, uh, layers of, of, of frog material there, that, that it has no depth in the, in the, uh, uh, down in the sole at all. It, it, if, you, if you take away the exfoliating frog there, then basically that, that apex of the frog is almost at ground level. You can see it a little better once we've uh, once we've removed, this is immediately after uh, just cleaning the foot up, cleaning all the, the dead gunk off of it, that you know, maybe an eighth of an inch max that a apex of the frog is lifted off the ground. And um, that combined with the very deep collateral groove in the back is showing us that, that we have a, uh, 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 an excessively high palmar angle to the coffin bone 